Jerusalem Tower reached 394. It was very important as we're on this journey that we're going through these different cultures and these different worlds almost. Every place should feel different and every place should have a different palette. It was important in Israel, for instance, to make it warm and feel like everything is safe. Yes, you feel the heat, you feel the warmth, life is as usual and you feel almost nothing has changed until obviously it does change. The choice of Jerusalem itself, which is the birth of humanity, the birth of all civilization, and then to mirror that in the fall of Israel, which is sort of the end of civilization. We're shooting in Malta for Jerusalem. Malta has very similar architecture and really is very practical to shoot at. And that's the why we chose Malta as a location for Jerusalem. We started shooting this particular sequence first in the movie. We shot for three weeks in Malta. Every day was 1,400 extras, you know, helicopters, cameras, and, and it was like a, a constant battling with the elements because there were so many people and creating the frenziness. And the Maltese extras were fantastic, and the costumes had to be made, and all of that was really great. Two people are working on a hijab. Amazing. This is a Hollywood production. <laughs> We make many costumes, we source many costumes. The movie was uh, prepped in London, so we have, uh, London has a very big Islamic community, so that was really easy. What we have to source is a lot of the Israeli costumes, which we have to make and source out of Israel straight. The zombie plague keeps spreading, and we do what we can. These are the Jerusalem Salvation Gates two of ten portals to the security perimeter into fortified Israel. The bus land is the in-gathering place, really. It's, it's just behind the wall, uh, which is supposed to protect the country from the zombies, who are amassing by the tens of thousands outside. And in this wall, there are salvation gates through which the refugees who are in zombie territory and who have not yet been attacked and bitten by zombies and therefore turned into zombies, they are allowed in. You're letting people in. Every human being we save is one less zombie to fight. The Israelis have decided that there's a common enemy and they join together in this fight against the zombies. And as you will see, there are Israeli soldiers fighting side by side with Palestinian soldiers. And when you're on the set and you see it, and of course when you see it in the film, that's an amazing and very, uh, sometimes a very moving thing to see. Jürgen Warmbraun, high-ranking official in the Mossad. Ludi Boken is actually who plays Warmbraun, and he's not an actor. He's an acquaintance of mine, a friend of mine. And we were in Israel, and we were looking for, for an actor, and we couldn't find someone. And uh, coincidentally, I met him in London to discuss something, and he's Israeli. And, and I was sitting there and looking at him, and I said, have you ever acted before? He said, no, I'm not an actor. I'm a film director and a, and a, and a film producer, and also because he knew that in the past I had been a war reporter, and I've been a lot in the Middle East, not only in Israel, where I've lived for a long time, but also in other places. And I've being around people who are like the character that I'm supposed to portray. And so he went in and he read for the role and I looked at the tape and the casting director actually told me, said, you know, your friend is really good. So I looked at the role and I sent it to Brad and I sent it to the studio and together I said, we love this guy, he's so good and he got the role. And you were that 10th man. Precisely. Even before I went for the reading, I understood that it's a big movie, it's an action movie, but it also has a very strong message about solidarity and the way people all unite in a big fight against evil. And I felt that it was something also important to do, and it was something in line with things that I would like to participate in. So here I am. It was interesting once he started shooting, suddenly there's this man who has been in a lot of very like life and death situations and suddenly was with Brad Pitt and was slightly nervous and shaking. And I said, look, you did so well in the reading. Let's, let's, let's just take a deep breath. And then he did suddenly, he just found his way and, and just hold his own and just play this character, which was amazing. I need answers. I, need I don't have answers. All you can do is find a way to hide. They're coming over the top!
The movie was going to be a legitimate representation of a global outbreak and therefore populated by people from around the world, let's get that right. While you couldn't go shoot Israel for Israel, you could certainly cast an Israeli actress, so we've done that. I play Sagan, which literally means in Hebrew, lieutenant, so she's called lieutenant. She's an Israeli soldier for the IDF and she gets assigned to protect him in this journey. What I always thought when every time I was in Israel is if you see a lot of the kids there in the army, they're very young. And I wanted to choose someone who had a very innocent face and it's a female and she has her hair cut. She almost looks like a young boy and has this very innocent face, but still is a woman. It hasn't really been a, a tough stunt. It's been trying to make the stunts not look like stunts. Trying to make this wave of zombies, this tsunami effect, this complete river rush of zombies, and this domino effect it has on people as they're running is to get as much real acting out of the performers, stunt-wise, extra-wise, and acting-wise, and just get this, this performance. <laughs> We have a few wire assists and, you know, the normal sort of stunt wire rigs, but generally it's getting them to simulate fear. Jerry Lane sees this little boy that has a shaved head and this herd of zombies comes vaulting down this walkway and they part around him just like a wave. You could never get stunt people to quite run this way where their balance would go in and out in quite the way that would be, frankly, manipulated. So we thought it was best that it be a boy on a ramp with 100% computer graphics, animated zombies running around. Him. The zombies are horrifyingly well made. It's like your worst fears and nightmares giving shape and form. She gets bitten in her hand, and Brad suddenly, out of, again, it's one of these instinctual moments, cuts off her hand, and then does a countdown to see if she turns into a zombie, and she doesn't. That's exactly what happens in rabies. You have a bite on your hand, it takes a lot longer for it to creep up your central nervous system, but creep it does. In the movie, it's a lot quicker, contracted, but in the case of rabies, it's exactly the same process which is happening. We're not gonna turn! We gotta move. I'd like to see the mass that we're talking about, because when we're filming it, it's like hundreds of zombies, but with CGI and with everything built together, it's gonna be thousands of them. shot going over the wall, that was a big old darn deal. A shot like that takes over a year to make because there's so much difficult animation. You might lay down a basic animation climbing up the wall and they're climbing on one another. And then you sprinkle in all these custom characters and you keep doing that until it looks better and better. And we had one live action shot of zombies hitting the wall and trying to climb up on top of one another. And we did clever camera tricks like lean the wall over in actual fact, roll the camera over so actually the actors could climb up further than they'd normally do. Then on top of that, we put in a few CG zombies also climbing up on the real people. So it's a mix and match deal again to try and enhance this zombie behavior. 